Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. For today's video, I'm going to be sharing the top 10 skincare products that I would keep if I was only allowed to keep 10 out of my entire collection. And this was truly so difficult for me to do because just for quick reference, I have combination skin. So I lean oily, but I definitely have moments where I'm feeling a little bit drier and tighter. I'll get dehydrated skin sometimes. I have very sensitive skin. I'm acne prone. So I feel like I have a million things going on at once and I never really know how my skin is going to be behaving when I wake up in the morning. So I very much flex and choose different products based on that. So this was really hard and there were so many things that I am in love with that I was really sad to have to exclude, but I had to be cutthroat. We had to keep it at 10. So if you are curious to see what my current top 10 skincare favorites are, which is subject to change as I continue to test new things, but at this time that I'm filming this video, what my top 10 favorites are, then you've come to the right spot. We're gonna jump right into that before we do. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Drop a comment below letting me know what some of your top 10 favorite skincare items are. And I just forgot what I was gonna say. Give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for doing that. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Instagram and TikTok handle are right here and my Lightroom preset filters for editing Instagram photos. It's so disrespectful. My Lightroom preset filters for editing Instagram photos are listed in my description box below, along with other links, discount codes, links to all of these products, timestamps, and anything else that you may need from me. So without further ado, let's jump into this video. All right, you guys know me, I like to keep my videos organized, and for videos like this, I like to talk about things in order of application. So we're gonna start off with makeup removal first, which for me is the first step in my cleansing routine at night to remove makeup and or sunscreen. And surprisingly, this makeup removal and cleanser in total was the most difficult category for me to narrow down because it totally depends on what I have on my face. I need a very different type of product to remove a full face of makeup, foundation, powder, mascara, liner than I do for just tinted sunscreen removal. So I was like, oh, this is hard. But I went based off of my full face because I would be screwed if I picked something that didn't remove that, you know? That was my thought process. And for that, my absolute favorite makeup remover is actually a micellar water. It's the Garnier Skin Active Micellar Cleansing Water. The one with the blue cap, the pink one's good too, but this one has actually replaced that as my new favorite. And this is the one that's supposed to be able to remove waterproof mascara. So honestly, there's nothing in this that's impressive for the skin or going to be really beneficial for the skin, which doesn't matter to me because I'm using it to remove my makeup. It's not even touching my face like a cleanser would really just for makeup removal, but it's also fragrance free and essential oil free. So this doesn't irritate my skin whatsoever. The formulation is really nice and lightweight, not greasy at all, which is something that I can't stand for a makeup remover. So how I like to use this is on a microfiber towel like this. This one's from Amazon. It's nice and plush and also is very affordable. So I'll link it below. I put warm water on this douse it with my cellar water and my makeup just melts right off my face. It is amazing. I love it so much. So if you're somebody that leans oily or just doesn't really like the feeling of a greasy makeup remover, I dropped it. This duo is gonna be your best friend. And don't tell me that this counts as part of my 10 products. It doesn't. The cleanser that I landed on that I think is perfect for both morning and night is probably not going to come as a surprise to a lot of you. It's the Geek and Gorgeous Jelly Joker Cleanser. So this is a low pH gentle cleanser. It's formulated between a pH of five and 5.4 intentionally so that it's not disruptive to the skin barrier or irritating at all. I can genuinely say this has never irritated my skin. And with my skin that is so, so sensitive and finicky, that is hard to come by. No stinging, no burning. If I do have irritation going on, I can always rely on this because I know it's not going to irritate me further, which is amazing in and of itself, but there's so many other things that I love about this. The formulation, it's the best formula I have ever tried for a cleanser. If you haven't tried it, you need to for that reason alone. It has really nice calming and soothing ingredients like panthenol and elantoin hydrating ingredients like sugar molecules. So it's just, it's beautiful all around, perfection. Couldn't ask for anything more, except, except it doesn't do a good job at removing makeup. Or if you have a tinted sunscreen, that is a little bit more of a long wear one. It's not the best at breaking that down. They do say that it works to remove water soluble makeup, but not oil soluble. So if they came out with something that 
removed makeup better, like on top of this, because I don't want them to get rid of this. I would be in heaven. All right, let's move on to serums and exfoliants. And I personally use different sorts of serums and exfoliants at different times of day. So let's start off with the ones that I use in the morning time. The first is vitamin C and the vitamin C serum that I chose is the Timeless Skincare Vitamin C Serum. Again, probably won't be a surprise because I've talked about this so many times. I truly have yet to find one that is more impressive than this, especially considering the price point. It's $18.99, you get, one fluid ounce of product, which is standard for a vitamin C. And it's not like it's one of those products where it's a good product considering the price. It's a good product plus the price is an added bonus. So it has 20% ascorbic acid, very high amount of ascorbic acid. So you're going to see hopefully really beneficial results here versus if you were to use something that was like 5%, you're not going to see as impressive results with something like that. This also has ferulic acid and vitamin E, which are not only going to help to stabilize the ascorbic acid, but also help to boost the photoprotective ability of this formulation. Plus it has a pump, which helps to protect the ascorbic acid from oxidizing, amazing so many vitamin C serums do not have a pump like that and it has hyaluronic acid and panthenol so we're getting some calming protecting and hydrating there which makes me not feel like I'm missing out by skipping a hydrating serum in the morning so so good would recommend just to anybody and everybody looking for a vitamin C serum save your money some of them are so expensive this is a real deal. I actually don't use that vitamin C serum every single day though, because I'd like to alternate back and forth between vitamin C and alpha hydroxy acids. You definitely can use them on the same day if it doesn't irritate your skin, but for me, more often than not, it usually causes some sensitivity, not always, but usually. So I just like to play it safe, use them on alternate days, and the exfoliant that I chose for this is the other Geeking Gorgeous product. It's called their Smooth Out 12% AHA plus cactus liquid. This has 10% glycolic acid and 2% lactic acid. I really like that those were the AHAs that they chose for this formulation because they're definitely the most impressive out of all of the alpha hydroxy acids that exist. There's tons, citric acid, tartaric acid, malic acid. If you want to know more about AHAs, what they all do for the skin, how they differ, which may be best for you, I will link a video below where I talk all about that. It's kind of like an AHA guide, but glycolic acid is definitely the most potent potent and most impressive for anti-aging benefits, whereas lactic acid is going to be a little bit safer for sensitive skin and is great at helping to hydrate the skin. So if you have dehydration, flakiness, anything like that, lactic acid is a great ingredient. So I personally love that combination and I also love that it's at 12% because that's something that's going to be more effective than let's say a 5% AHA solution, but at the same time is not so high that I have to worry about excessive irritation or I have to worry about not using it too frequently to prevent the irritation. And because I use another active at night that is the most potent out of anything that I own, I do have to be careful with exfoliants and tend to stay away from things that are really, really high with AHAs. Then at nighttime, I don't use any other acids or active ingredients like that. Well, I do use an active ingredient. We'll get to it, but that's why I make sure that my serums don't have any ingredients like that because I'm already using something that checks that box. And I feel like a broken record with this. This is my all-time favorite holy grail anti-aging serum. I feel like it has so many incredible ingredients in it. It's from Dermatology. It's called their Needleless Serum. I use it every single night without fail. Not only does it feel amazing on the skin, but it has incredible ingredients. So some of those include because there's so many, I knew I would forget, I wrote them down. Niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, pea extract, bamboo extract, matrixyl 3000, ceramides, and vitamin E amongst others as well. So I personally feel like for all of the ingredients that you get, this is the best serum that I've found. It is a little bit more expensive than something like The Ordinary, but I'm totally fine spending that money because you're getting additional beneficial ingredients and the formulation's great. So I do have a discount link with Dermatology. It's always in my description boxes of my videos. It gets you 20% off. You obviously don't have to use that if you don't want to, but no extra cost to you just gets you 20% off. All right, let's move on to moisturizer next. So this was also tricky because while this is my number one holy grail moisturizer, I was thinking about the winter and I was like but I'm gonna want something thicker and creamier and in the winter I typically have some sort of irritation going on with my skin because it's so dry here so I want something for that but maybe I'll do this video again in the winter 
and we'll revisit then. But the moisturizer that did make the cut is the Vanna Cream Daily Facial Moisturizer. This is so, so good. It's basic, it's not like it's cute. I mean, it looks like something you would find, I don't know, in a doctor's office, but who cares because I love it. Great ingredients, it has hyaluronic acid, ceramides, lecithin, so things that will help to hydrate and replenish, help to protect your skin barrier, and well, it's also, of course, like all of these products, fragrance, essential oil, and irritant-free, but the formula, oh my gosh, I can't even tell you how much I am obsessed with this formulation. It's lightweight, but it's hydrating and moisturizing enough for me to last all day long, and I'll often use this at night, especially in the summertime when I don't need something thicker, and I wake up fresh and clean. I'm good, my skin's soft and smooth, this is just it, and it works amazingly well underneath sunscreens that are a little bit shinier and dewier and underneath makeup too. So for obvious reasons, I had to, I had to. All right, next let's move on to eye cream. So I love a good eye cream. I know people say it's not necessary, which to a certain extent I agree with, but if you're like me and prefer a lighter weight moisturizer, Something like this is not going to cut it around the eyes, especially at night. Like I need something thick to make sure that the moisture is not going anywhere because the fine lines are already starting to pop, unfortunately. So I originally chose this product to use as a nighttime eye cream. I will literally use this until the end of time as a nighttime eye cream, but it's also a multi-purpose product because I can use it on my lips and for skin barrier damage too. So it's the CeraVe Healing Ointment. I truly cannot live without this. This is almost gone and I have a huge tub in my bathroom waiting for me and ready to go because you better believe I am not living a single day without this. This has occlusive ingredients in it which are going to help to prevent the skin from transepidermal water loss. So it has petrolatum, mineral oil, paraffin, and others. But it also has things that are going to help to protect, smooth, soften, and hydrate the skin which is definitely not always the norm for an ointment like this. So it also has ceramides, hyaluronic acid, cholesterol, vitamin E, really great ingredients and it's just, it's perfect. This is something that definitely feels very thick and heavy on the skin, but around the eyes, on the lips, it's like heaven for me. So if you are searching for the perfect ointment, this is for you. Now let's move on to sunscreen. So obviously I'm only applying sunscreen in the morning and I will do that after my moisturizer. So after this, and then after I use my exfoliant or my vitamin C, technically I would probably use another eye cream because I'm not using this in the morning, but I'm not gonna cheat. So after this, I will go in with sunscreen. And I had to pick one that was untinted and one that was tinted. There was no way I could just choose between one of those. So the untinted sunscreen that made the cut for this video is the Vertio UV Moisture Gel Sunscreen. This is an SPF 50. It has a PA rating of plus 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 and it's a combination sunscreen. So it does have a couple filters that you will find in US sunscreens. It's a Japanese sunscreen, by the way, that's why I say that. So it has octanoxate, which is a chemical filter, titanium dioxide, which is a mineral filter. But the other filters you will not find in US sunscreens and they just, they're superior when it comes to both formulation and protection. So those filters include Uvenyl A+, Tenazorb S, and Uvenyl T150. I also like that this does have some other skin loving ingredients thrown in that will hydrate and calm the skin. So it has skullcap root, green tea, moringa extract, aloe, glycerin, or in vitamin E, but that's really not the reason I'm obsessed with this because we can find nice ingredients elsewhere. The reason I am obsessed is because of the formulation. It is so good. So this is incredibly lightweight. It's liquidy. It feels so nice to apply to the skin. Soft, smooth. It's non-sticky, greasy, tacky. It doesn't streak. It doesn't pull. It doesn't pill. It's slightly gel-like, which again, you guys know I love, and it's everything to me. The finish is really nice and natural and radiant, but not in a greasy way. I did see a couple comments from you guys that felt that this looked greasy on your skin, or maybe it was the essence form of this. But I find that with this and really any Asian sunscreen, at first they can look really, really shiny, and it's like, oh my gosh, that's too much. But if you give it just a few minutes to settle into the skin, at least for me, this doesn't look greasy at all. And again, keep in mind, I do have oily skin, so, I love the finish for that reason. It's not something that looks flat and dry. It doesn't leave my skin feeling dry. It leaves me looking and feeling hydrated 
but in a more natural way that does not enhance my oils. For a tinted sunscreen, this was probably my second most difficult category to narrow down because there's so many I'm obsessed with. I recently posted a video sharing, well, has it already gone up? If it's not, it'll be up soon, but my top five all-time favorite tinted sunscreens. I feel like I couldn't choose between all of those because again, they do a little bit something different for my skin, but because I forced myself to narrow down, we have one here and it's the Ulta MD UV Element Sunscreen. This is a mineral sunscreen only, so it has zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. It doesn't have a ton as far as other ingredient highlights, but it does have hyaluronic acid and vitamin E. I'm okay with that because I have so many other products that go on before this that have incredible ingredients. So the good thing is that it's fragrance and essential oil free and it actually also does have iron oxides, which is going to provide us additional protection against visible light. So that's why I had to choose a tinted sunscreen too and if I wanted you know a little color little tiny bit of coverage that is also the benefit of course of one that is tinted this is also water resistant up to 40 minutes and the formulation is great I would say it's more of a lotion than anything but it kind of has a whipped feel to it or look to it if you will and it's not as runny and liquidy and lightweight as something like this but it's also not heavy or greasy whatsoever it's very easy to blend into the skin also feels very very nice and soft and moisturizing but feels lightweight on me once it's fully blended in and doesn't feel like oh my gosh this is not going to work on my oily skin and on top of that the finish on me is very natural it's not greasy non shiny but it's not matte either so i feel like it's just a really nice universal finish and last but certainly not least is product number 10 which is tretinoin this it's the best thing honestly to ever happen to my skin and i do not say that lightly because i have had problem skin my entire life nothing has ever done to my skin what tretinoin has done it's truly incredible so if you're looking for something that not only helps with acne but is the best thing that you're gonna find for anti-aging, smoothing the skin, preventing fine lines and wrinkles, this is it. Like if I could only pick one serum, vitamin C, needleless serum, exfoliants, all of that, one ingredient even, not even a serum, one ingredient, it would be this. No questions asked, I don't even have to think twice, this is all I need. So. If you are not currently using tretinoin and you would like to know more about it or you want tips and tricks on how to start and minimize irritation because it definitely can be very irritating, I will list some videos below where I talk all about it, the benefits, what you can expect. But for those of you that are on it, you already know the drill. You're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, we get it, move along. I don't wanna end this video yet because it doesn't feel complete. I look at these products and I feel so happy about them, like all of these truly make me feel warm and fuzzy inside. But at the same time, I'm also thinking about all the other things in my bathroom that I want sitting out here too. Because I have so many other favorites. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Are any of these products your favorite? What are your favorites that I didn't mention? Is there anything you think I desperately need to try? If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, click on that notification bell, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much again for your support. It truly means a lot. If you would like to see a part two of this, or I'm trying to think, like where I really narrow down product categories, so maybe I could do something like this for, I don't even know. Anything else that you guys would like to see, hair care? Let me know, I can definitely do that as well. Otherwise, make sure to stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few days. Until then though, I hope you have a great few days.